Hey guys, it's me, Mrs. Ronka, and I'm using a different software than I used for the last like picture-in-picture -picture video that I did. So let me know if this one is better or if the other one has better quality. I'm gonna go through some problems on the flowchart proofs, like the level one more difficult ones, um, not just the super basic ones. So let's see how it goes. So I've got this one here and it says, based on the diagram, complete the flowchart proof and notice that the last statement and reason have been filled in for you. So if you look, uh, they already filled in that these two triangles are going to be congruent for ASA. And basically when you have a flow proof, the three boxes right above where the two triangles are congruent are gonna match the three things that you're proving. So you're gonna prove a pair of angles are congruent, a pair of sides are congruent, and another pair of angles are congruent. However, the order that you put them in these three boxes doesn't matter. It does not need to go angle, side, angle for when you're typing it into these boxes. So I'm going to, just because it's easy to do that, um, you'll see when we move on to some other problems, if they have a given statement in them, sometimes, be, the way it flows, it'll be impossible to start the first box off with what the first letter represents, um, but I'll show you that when we get to it. So for right now, I'm going to start by choosing the type of statement, and it's going to be a, st a statement saying that I have two congruent angles. So I'm going to click the angle congruence, and then if I look at the picture, uh, I have a couple of pairs of angles that I know are congruent, and those are, sorry, hold on computer's not letting me show you. Um, we can see angle B and angle D are congruent. So that's what we're going to type. B is congruent to D. And the reason we knew that, so the reason for saying those two are congruent, is because that information was given to us. It's right there on the picture. We didn't come up with that information. That information was presented to us in the problem. So we're going to mark given. right here. So that's some given information. The next letter is S, so that stands for two sides that are congruent. And I can see right here, let me just try to make this smaller. Um, I can see right here that this side BE is congruent to this side DE because they both have the same tick mark on them. Again, that information was given to me, so that's what I'm going to put in the little box here. So I'm going to mark, uh, we have a couple of congruent sides. Make sure you pick the correct symbol. Um, we're not saying that we have, sorry, we're not saying that we have perpendicular sides or parallel sides. We're just saying we have congruent sides. And we're going to name those two segments. Uh, let's see, what was it? I think it was B. Yeah, B, E, and E, D. So B, E, and this one would be. And the reason why I knew that was because, again, that information was given to me. And then the second pair of angles that I know that are congruent are going to be these vertical angles right here in the middle. So they didn't mark them for me. Those are the ones that I said you should mark yourself. So you would draw this on your own paper if you weren't sure that it was angle side angle and you needed to see it visually. Um, but we can just go ahead and say, OK, well, we know that that angle is congruent to that angle. Now, we cannot just call that angle E because there's technically one, two, three, four angles at that same intersection. So I'm going to have to name this one with its three letters and this one with its three letters. So I'm going to say that I have a couple of angles that are congruent. And those angles are C, E, D. C, E, D. And then the other angles that are congruent are B, E. And the reason why I knew that is not because it was given to me, because they didn't mark that for me. It's because I know that those are vertical angles. So I'm going to click the option that gives me vertical angles. And then I can go through and submit my answer and find out that I was correct. Um, OK, so that would be one of the ones where we just have like a bow tie problem. Um, we also have some where they give us maybe like a rhombus type of shape. So let's see that one. Okay, 
Uh, so in this one, do you see how they start off with some given information? They're telling us that AB is parallel to DC. So if they give you some explicit given information, you need to make that the very first thing in your proof. So when I go to do my flowchart proof, the very first thing I'm going to fill in is that given statement. And that was a given statement talking about parallel lines. And you literally copy it directly from the question. So it was AB is parallel to DC. So I can say AB is parallel to DC. And then the reason we knew that was because it was given to us. Now, if you remember from class, parallel lines are going to be um, the ones that are showing us something about some angles that are congruent. And we have to make that Z shape. So what I would recommend that you do is draw this on your own paper or use the snipping tool like I'm going to do here. So I'm going to snip that and I'm going to paste it into this program here. And I'm going to use my highlighter and I'm going to mark those two lines. So it was, um, what did they say? AB and DC. So it was AB, which is this line, and DC, which is this line, and this was the line that connected them. And I usually just do that so I can really clearly see where I'm going to be marking my angles that are congruent, and it's going to be right in the corners of those uh, pieces there. So it's going to be this angle here, and it's going to be this angle here. So when you're doing your flow proof, because we just talked about these two lines being parallel, the very next thing that we're going to mention is what that parallel line situation created. And what it created were two congruent angles. So I'm going to need to name those angles. That's angle B, A, C here in the corner. And I'm going to say that that is congruent to angle D, C, A. And they're also going to ask me the reason why those angles are congruent. And the reason why they're congruent is because they are alternate interior angles. So let's see how that looks. BAC and DCA. So your statement is going to be, you have two congruent angles. And they were... as well as DCA. And then the reason those were congruent, when you look through all your options, you're going to pick the one that talks about them being alternate interior. So it says parallel lines cut by a transversal form congruent alternate interior angles. Depending on the software program that you're answering your question in, like if it's on the FSA or a PMA, they might just say alternate interior angles theorem. Um, or they might word it a different way, but the keywords you want to look for are alternate interior angles. And then, let's see, if you look at this one, it was um, an angle-angle side problem. So the other thing in this picture that we know is that this angle is congruent to this angle. Uh, so I'm going to mark and, and say that. So that's BCA and DAC. So I would say the angles. And it is angle BCA and DAC. And the reason that I knew those were congruent was because it was given to me. OK. And then here is an example where they told us in the problem that we're using angle angle side. So even though, let me go back to my picture. In class, I told you one of the things that you could do if you were the one writing this proof, you could, and sometimes you'll have to mark this middle line with three lines there. And that would show us that we were using the reflexive property. So. What would happen if we did that? If I just draw one of these triangles by itself 
and I am going to mark this here, that angle they had. I'm going to mark this alternate interior angle we had. And if I did this, do you see how this pattern here would be angle, side, angle? So because they are the ones that wrote the proof, like they filled in the last step for us, we have to use the, the rule they were using. So they are using angle, angle, side, which means we don't want the side that's marked in the middle. We want a different side. So we're actually not going to mark these three here. Oh, and it's not going to let me erase it. So we actually don't need to use the reflexive property in this problem because they already told us that this side was congruent to this side. So we know that this is the side that we're going to be talking about. So that's why we're saying angle, angle, side instead of angle, side, angle. So you don't actually need to put those three. Um, if you were the one writing the proof yourself and you wanted to prove using ASA, then you just wouldn't talk about these two lines. Instead, you would talk about this line in the middle. So I hope that makes sense. There's a little bit of flexibility if you are the one writing it, but if you're having to kind of play a matching game based on what the question has, you just have to go with what they said. So they said BC was congruent to AD. And those are two sides. So I'm going to pick the option that says I have congruent sides. And I'll say BC is congruent to AD. And the only reason that I knew that was because it was given to me. They marked it on the picture. And then I can submit my answer. Cool. Um, so hopefully that's somewhat helpful for you. Um, Trying to think if I should do any more in this video. It's already getting to be kind of long. Um, I'll do this last one, I guess, and then I'll be done. So uh, this one shows you um, the given statement that AC is the angle bisector of angle BCD. So the very first thing you want to do is write that exact statement. AC is the angle bisector of BCD right here. So. We have an angle bisector. So you want to pick the one that says that a line segment bisects an angle, not the one that says you bisected a segment. There's a difference. So we said that AC bisects angle, I already forgot, BCD. Okay. And the reason we knew that is it was given to us. Now immediately, because this is a flow proof, the next thing you need to write is what happens when you have an angle that gets bisected. So if I go up to that picture, this is the angle that got bisected, right? Angle B, C, D. So let me actually, um, if I were you, like I would draw this on my own paper, or you could use the snipping tool, or I think Snip and Sketch lets you write actually on the paper. So we'll put that there. So uh, the question said that AC, which is this line right here, bisects angle BCD, which is this big angle here. So to show that that angle got bisected, um, you need to mark two little angles. So I'm going to mark this one. And I'm going to use two markings because they already used a single marking there. And then I'm going to mark this one. And you're going to need to name those two angles. So this angle is angle DCA. And this angle is BCA. So you're going to say that those two are congruent. And the reason is going to be because we had an angle bisector. Um, and just to get us set up for the final answer, um, let's see. If I marked those uh, reflexive property in the middle, you can kind of tell it would be angle side angle. So if we're supposed to use reflexive property, then we would mark there. But I don't think, I think this probably is going to be angle, angle, side. And we're supposed to use this given side that they gave us and not talk about reflexive property. But let's see. So we had DCA and BCA. So those were our two angles.
differently. And the reason why we knew those were congruent is because an angle bisector decide, divides an angle into two congruent angles. Um, and they did say angle, angle, side. So I'm not going to even talk about reflexive property in this one because that would give me angle, side, angle. So instead, I'm just going to mention the other two given things. We know that angle DAC is congruent to BAC because they told us. And we know that side DC is congruent to side BC because they told us. So that's what I'm going to mark. It's just because they gave it to us. And then DC and BC were the two congruent sides. C and BC. All right, so let's double check those were the right sides. DC and BC, and that was given to us. And that's it. So now you have all of your statements and you can submit your answer. So Good luck. Hopefully that's helpful. I'll make videos with more examples in them if needed, but we're already kind of overdue with time here. So I hope you have a good rest of the day. Bye.